And welcome everybody to another edition of the GSMC Baseball Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. As always, I'm your host, Kenneth Grunfelder, and it's great to have you guys here on this Friday, January 26th. We have a lot to talk about on the show today, but before I get into that, I just want to remind you guys, as always, to tip or donate and get your comments recognized, make sure to go to the following link. That is streamelements.com slash slash tip. Again, that really helps the show, makes the show more interactive between myself, the host, and you guys, the viewers. Again, that is streamelements.com slash slash tip. And as always, it is displayed on the ticker on the bottom of the show segment down below. So... With that, let's get into what we are going to talk about for today. So we're going to start off the show. We're going to talk about um, the latest signings here in the offseason. And we're actually about a month away from uh, the first spring training game being played. Um, and I know it's been a little bit since um, I last did a uh, baseball podcast um, because now it's every other Friday. Um, so we'll talk about the latest signings. Then we'll get into the latest rumors. So we'll look at the hot stove uh, side of things, um, what's trending Um, where the remaining free agents could potentially go, uh, the latest news on them, because there's still some big free agents out there, uh, like Blake Snell, Jordan Montgomery, um, Cody Bellinger, of course, uh, Matt Chapman. So we'll get into that. Um, Then in the third part of the show, we'll take a look at the uh, the Hall of Fame results um, from the other day. Um, We have four... uh, Hall of Famers now that um, that made it this year, and then uh, we'll take a look at the ballot uh, for next year. So we do have some things to talk about, obviously, because listen, the the off season. Uh, let's be honest. Um, there's been a lot of uh, there's been a lot of um, dead time, uh, you know, as opposed to you know like because you know Otani and Yamamoto sign and Soto gets traded and you got, and you got a bunch of stuff to talk about. Then all of a sudden there's like nothing going on. There's just tumbleweeds. Um, you know, going past us, wait, waiting for people to sign. So, um, but we do have some stuff to talk about, which is good. So, um, yeah, that was weird how I said dead, dead air. I was going to say dead air and I ended up saying dead time, but anyways. So, um, yeah, let's get into the, uh, the first topic here, which is talking about, uh, some, uh, the, the, uh, the latest signings here. So the big one was, uh, the Astros signing Josh Hader, um, the all-star reliever. And um, it was interesting because the Astros kind of just, you know, came out of nowhere. Um, Because in the beginning of all the hater stuff, you didn't really, you know, see the Astros, you know, trending at all um, or being connected to hater. And then all of a sudden, you know, I look at, uh, you know, I look on the MLB app and I see, you know, in the hot stove part uh, that the Astros are pushing to sign hater. And I'm like, all right, well, let's see what ends up happening. And then all of a sudden, Turns out, yeah, the Astros got Josh Hader um, because they do have they do have some free agents um, when it comes to their bullpen. Uh, Hector Neris, obviously, who's been a uh, you know um, in the news a lot. Uh, teams are interested in him. Um, some of their other relievers as well, and also Kendall Graveman, who is a part of their bullpen. He's going to be out for the full t- you know 2024 season because uh, he has uh, shoulder surgery. So the Astros bullpen, you know, needs a little bit of help. So. They figured, all right, let's just throw a bunch of money at, you know, the best relief pitcher out there and one of the best closers in the game um, in Josh Hader. So um, they signed him to a five-year contract. So he actually is so, – so he wanted more – he wanted a bigger contract than uh, Edwin Diaz. So he got – so he ended up getting the five-year contract. So, yeah, it was five years, $95 million. Um, yeah, he's been one of the best, you know, relievers in the game. Um, five all-star selections. Uh, he's posted a career 2.5 ERA. Um, but yeah, this was a, uh, this was a good signing for the Astros. Now as a Yankee fan, you know, I don't like it of course, because, you know, if the, um, if the Yankees are going to want to do, uh, if the Yankees are going to want to get further in the playoffs, you know, well, first they got to get back to the playoffs cause they missed it last year, but I, I anticipate that they will be a playoff team. Um, the Astros, once again, will be standing in their way, and they're going to have to deal with Josh Hader, who's a, uh, you know, again, one of the best closers in the game. So I, I think that, of course, this is a good move for them. Also, I was, um, there was a, an article I saw, you know, talking about uh, the Astros, uh, you know, dealing with maybe some um, some budget constraints 
Um, cause it said, cause I was reading that they're set to pay the luxury tax in 2024, um, making the stakes higher for the season's outcome. Um, they got these impending free agents, Alex Bregman, Altuve, Framer Valdez, and Kyle Tucker. Um, I, they might not be able to keep all those guys, especially now with, you know, Hayter sign, signing that big contract. So, um, you know, and it was talking about if, you know, if the Astros aren't having a good year, which I don't see why that would be the case. I feel like the Astros are going to make the playoffs and, you know, they're going to contend for a championship. But in the event that they don't have a good season, they could be trading these guys possibly at the trade deadline. Because it was weird, you know, seeing, you know, on the hot stove uh, part of uh, the MLB at Bad App um, that, you know, they were listening to offers for like Valdez and Bregman. And I was just like, I, I was like, why? But that could also just be they're not going to be able to keep all these guys. Um, so we'll have to, uh, we'll keep an eye on that. But um, yeah, so they at least get Hater. I mean, I, I think they're going to be one of the final, you know, four teams remaining um, because that just seems like that's a given every year. I mean, you talk about like we, you know, talking about football, you know, doing the football podcast, though people are sick of the Kansas City Chiefs. Well, look at baseball. I mean, people are sick of the Houston Astros. Um, I know I am, but they're a really good team, and I and I think that's gonna that's gonna continue this year, um, unless you know I, unless I'm missing something and they end up not doing as well. But we'll see. But again, I, I think they're gonna be one of those, you know, one of the four teams remaining. Um, you know, when we get to the postseason, because it just cause it happens every year. You know, uh, they they have been in the ALCS now, so I think same thing as the Chiefs, six years, right, six or seven years. So they made it in seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Uh, oh yeah, no, seven years. Yeah, the, they've made it seven years in a row. Yeah, so which is which is impressive. Sorry, I had to do. Uh, I had to think back really quickly. But yeah, so um. Getting Hater though, I mean that's big for them to help with their uh, their bullpen. So you also you had some other pitchers sign. Um, the Pirates they actually signed a Roldis Chapman to a one year ten point five million dollar contract. I mean it's kind of, it might, it's going to end up being probably like when he signed with the Royals. Um, you know he's going to end up being a trade target if the Pirates aren't contending. I mean Andrew McCutcheon was talking about the Pirates taking the next step. I mean we'll wait and see. They did get off to that good start last year and then. You know, they just fell apart and ended up not going anywhere. Who knows? Maybe this year's different. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but they get Chapman. You also had the Dodgers making another move, signing another pitcher. Uh, they signed uh, James Paxton to a one-year $11 million contract. Um, he's dealt with some injuries in recent years. Um, but you know what? He's a back-of-the-rotation guy. Um, you know, while, you know, some of their other pitchers are working their way back from injuries. So, um, you know, it's a one year contract and maybe they figure, uh, they can unlock something in Paxton, you know, uh, so we'll see. But, um, yeah, so they signed Paxton, the Nationals signed Joey Gallo to a one year, $5 million contract. Uh, last year he hit 177 with 21 home runs across the 111 games. Uh, again, he could be another guy that gets moved to the deadline um if you know if teams are interested but uh he kind of he's kind of like you know you know you don't really hear about him anymore because ever since he went to the yankees and then got traded to the dodgers um you don't you don't really hear about him um he did get off to a good start with the twins but then you know he just didn't he didn't really play um but we'll see so he goes to the nationals um, another big signing, actually. So the Brewers, they signed Reese Hoskins to a two-year, $34 million contract. And, um, you know, it's interesting because, obviously, the Phillies, they moved Bryce Harper to first base. He's going to play first base moving forward. And, um, yeah, so that really left no place for Reese Hoskins. Um, you know, and, I, you know, I saw on social media, like, a bunch of Phillies fans were commenting on a post about it. And, um, you know, they were basically, they, they were all nice comments. Um, but, yeah, Hoskins missed the entire 2023 season with a torn ACL. So he's looking to bounce back. Um, from 2018 to 2022, uh, he averaged 34 home runs per 162 games. 
Um, you know, and it kind of a slow start to the offseason, but the Brewers, they took a chance on him. Their projected first baseman going into the season was Jake Bowers, who they acquired from the Yankees. So I think this is a good move. Um, and the team, they opted not to tender uh, Rowdy Telez, um, who was, you know, be, was the first baseman for them. Uh, lefty power bat. So now they get in, they get Hoskins, who was a righty bat. So, you know, we'll see what he could do in a bounce back season here. Um, you hope he does well. Because obviously, you know, the Phillies, they had World Series aspirations and he was going to be a part of that. And then he gets hurt. So that was an unfortunate injury. But hopefully he does well. Hopefully he does well. Also, um, the Marlins, they signed Trey Mancini to a minor league contract. Uh, he spent 2023 with the Cubs. Um, so we'll see if he has a shot to maybe, you know, get to the ma uh, make the major league roster. Um, also, actually, last night, uh, Jock Peterson, he signed a uh, one-year contract with the Diamondbacks. Um, 15 home runs last season for the Giants, and he stays in the NL West. I mean, he played with the Dodgers, then he went to the – well, he also was with the Braves, but, you know, then he went to the Giants. Now he's with the Diamondbacks. Um, a lefty power bat. Uh, so we'll see, uh, you know, how he fits there. Also, David Robertson, he signed uh, a one-year contract as well with the Texas Rangers. So they get a bullpen arm. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I was kind of hoping that the Yankees would maybe get him because I'd, I'd like to see a Robertson-Yankees reunion. But it doesn't seem like that's uh, that's going to happen now. Um, so he signs with the, uh, with the Rangers. And um, I think that's pretty much it if I'm missing any other signings here. But, um, yeah, so that's pretty much all the, uh, the most recent signings. Um, but, yeah, like I said, we are, we are about, um, you know, one month away from spring training. And we got a subscriber live on the show that is uh, Jamie Shredder. So I, uh, I, if I pronounced that right, I, we appreciate the, uh, the subscription there. Um, so that was, yeah, that was a live alert on the show. Look at that. Um, but yeah, so that that's pretty much all of the uh, the signings from the uh, from the past couple of weeks. Like I said, the show's gonna be every other Friday going forward, at least the baseball uh, podcast. Obviously, the football podcast is gonna be um, is gonna continue to be every day, you know, throughout the week. But it's uh, you know we made the we we made a change uh, to the baseball schedule, so that's gonna be uh, every other Friday. So, um, but like I said, I mean. We're getting closer to baseball season. Um, you know, the Super Bowl is, you know, coming up. You know, we got Championship Sunday coming up, and obviously I'll be talking about that, you know, um, when I do the next show. And, uh, yeah, then you got the, the Pro Bowl and then the Super Bowl, and then it's, okay, baseball, it's your turn to take over. So uh, it's, uh, it's exciting stuff. So, um but uh, yeah, so when we uh, when we come back from our first break of the show, uh, we are then going to talk about the latest rumors. Where you know what is, what's the latest news, rumors on some of the other remaining free agents out there? Because again, there's still some big names out there that it, you know they haven't signed yet. So we'll get into that when we come back from our first break of the show. So stick around, and we'll be right back here on the GSMC Baseball Podcast. 